to be all the way transparent and, and like honest with you, like I doubted my faith based music at mm -hmm. first. I even doubted rechanging my Instagram and my name because I'm thinking in my head like, what is people gonna think? Mm -hmm. What is people gonna think? But once God broke me from that people pleasing spirit, I'm sorry to get so aggressive. No, you, no, you have to. Yeah. But, it, but it just irked me, bro. When people just, oh, I gotta do this for this person. Like, Shut up. No, mm -hmm. you don't. What's going on, everybody? It's your girl, JQ, sports PR manager and sports personality. And it's your boy, Spoon, man, basketball coach, high school junkie, sports junkie, just really trying to figure this shit out. And you're now Thank tuned you. in to another episode of the Count Counting Me Out. Me Out podcast out of podcast. Mm. today we have a special guest with us emmanuel the prophet mm. let me make sure i get this right um you are a mainstream inspirational artist yes ma'am can you can you give the people a little rundown of what that means so a mainstream inspirational artist is just being on the mainstream specter and just like encouraging the world like we encourage people and we it's like a positivity like positivity music it's like to like the mainstream masses say no more mm. say no more so, so we like to wait hold on hold on because i know you finna okay, go in okay look now you so know I'm how i'm gonna get yeah for sure so before we start we have some fire questions yeah i have a question and spoon's gonna ask you his his question mm. so my question for you would be what other talents do you have mm. outside of music has nothing to do with music mm. well i like to hoop a little bit hoop. i like to okay. work out Hold when on, because when you, when you said hoop, though, like, yeah, is this like a, a side hobby or is this like I quit hooping to right. start? <laughs> see what I'm saying? I'm trying to see where we're going now because nah, folks going to get you in the celebrity game and you're nah. going to stank it up. Then people going to be saying, he, man, the man said he, he told me play. he can hoop. You feel me? <laughs> no, nah, nah, I'm telling you, like, I, I got a shot. That's about it. Okay, so when they start yeah. off like that now, JQ, I don't know. I don't know. That. Who's your favorite? going crazy in the air, you though. Know. Okay. 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 I'm telling you. But what position? I was a shooting guard. Shooting guard, okay. It really was, though. Steph Curry with the shot. Let me see what it looked like up top. Left hand. Oh, Ooh. left. Right, I see, couldn't look. Stand. Hold on. Oh Hold on God. now. Left hand. That looked all right up top now. <laughs> Index finger in the rim. Yeah. You feel me? Elbow <laughs> tight. I'm talking about. All right. We ain't got to talk about it. We ain't got to yeah. talk, talk about it. I can't stand guarding left. <laughs> left-handed people yeah y'all are so hard to guard but what you got for him spoon all right man you know i like to i like to keep it simple man i know um we talked a little bit off air you said you from michigan yeah yeah so i um do y'all eat chicken wings up there with y'all with y'all yeah okay so what soul food for real drums or flats oh, i love it <laughs> <laughs> I no like preference. That. I like that. So if you order a ten piece right now, what, what's your flavor? What's your go to flavor? Hot. Just regular hot. Yeah. Domestic terrors. I need regular hot, and if it's boneless, I need barbecue. Hey, there's mm. no such thing as a boneless wing. It's a chicken nugget. A you're, chicken eating a, nugget? you're eating a chicken nugget or a chicken tender. Ain't no. Don't say boneless wings. Ain't no such thing. Why not? Because they not digging in the drum and taking the wings out the drum, gang. You don't believe a, that? You ever seen them debone the chicken wing? And give it to you and say this is ten piece boneless. That's crazy. It don't even look like a drum when you get it. You get a boneless <laughs> a chicken tender, gang. A chicken ball. A chicken ball. <laughs> we might gotta roll with that one then. Right, a ten piece chicken ball, hot. Yeah. No nothing else. You know how they do, like roll the meatball? Okay. Yeah. That's probably what they do. The What's your drink? My drink. With the with the ten piece chicken wing ball. You gotta go sprite. Regular sprite. The yeah. McDonald's sprite. The one or that just a regular You fit <laughs> That McDonald's Sprite <laughs> Gonna get you right here You gotta do that one though For sure Gotta hit that one for sure yeah. it just, It's way more refreshing You ain't lying mm. With like the lemon in the line mm. The real Sprite the Oh the real, real Sprite. Sprite Yeah No I'll not, stick with the McDonald's Not, not the fake Sorry. kind The water me down one See, No me, ice Do you get ice in your drink? I got to get the ice Light mm. ice Do you say light ice? Light ice specifically Okay mm. The only that people that follow that rule Is, is Chick-fil-A Really? Yeah. Chick fil A is the only one that gets See, light ice time. right. Mm -hmm. I, I don't play about my orders. So Me like, neither. Like I'd be really mad gotta, as hell. They got to understand where I'm coming from yeah. with my orders. You pay for it. Yeah. So you should get what you order. And I'm a hungry type person. Uh -huh. Yeah. I can see y'all now sending the food back. Oh, get yeah. Mad. I'm yeah. one of those. Yeah. yeah. Then you get mad when it's and wrong then, again. Yeah. Just whole, give me my money know, back. My whole team don't play about their food, though. 
Like we all as they that. shouldn't. We, like you we, paid for hey, it. So let this right here, y'all gonna go ahead and send that back. Y'all didn't cook that right. Mm -hmm. All that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like he don't he don't know what that is. Hey man, look y'all see this y'all see this right here. I don't gotta say nothing. Oh, them yeah. folks leave a napkin out the bag. Them folks leave a napkin out the bag, gang. The whole order going yeah. back. <laughs> we call she on the phone with corporate. Shout it, don't play that shit. Hey, look, yeah. God's timing for me. Come on now, I'll be waiting. Right. Come on, in the name. In so, the name. <laughs> so, so we got a lot to get into, Emmanuel. Yeah, um, sure. I want to start off. Take us back. Mm -hmm. What was your upbringing like? Uh yeah, I grew up in the church faith base really. Um, grew up on the south side of Jackson, Michigan. You know, it was hard for us. I had both my parents, but unfortunately, we grew up in poverty. Mm -hmm. You know, things of that nature. Um, I got six siblings all together. Are you the oldest? No, I'm the second oldest. The second oldest, okay. Yeah, no, I'm the third oldest. Third oldest. because I got. Uh, oh, you brother. don't you don't fuck with him. Whoever that was, you left out. <laughs> when you watch this interview, gang, he ain't really <laughs> fooling with you, gang. Just keep it a buck with you. Like that, uh, Six I sibling, oh, just left a whole man off the roster, man. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> listen, bro, listen. So I got an older brother, which is my dad's son. I got an older sister, which is my mom's daughter, and then it's four of us all together mm. with both parents. Okay, you know what I'm saying. So I'm the second oldest out of the four of us. Okay, mm -hmm. okay, okay. Know, most definitely. Okay. Um, but my upbringing, to go back to your question, I ain't mean to like. It's leave okay. It out no, like that. That, you good. You good. But uh, yeah, we grew up in a church, very loving home. We grew up on love, family time. You know what I'm saying? And just like singing together, dancing together. You feel me? Clowning. You Were y'all like, at the table for dinner kind of family or get your plate and go watch whatever you're doing? Nah, we for sure was at the table growing Every time. up. Mm. But as we grew older, you know, that's when people Start. just mm -hmm. right. doing pray for thing. the food. And, and then that's it, for sure. You know, when that phone generation For sure, for sure. It for was sure. different. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, we, it, was a, it was a very loving home. You know what I'm saying? Uh, just products of our environment, really. Like, Jackson, Michigan was kind of crazy. You Tough. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Tough. Shootouts. My brother had to get my mama down on the porch. She on the porch just on the phone. My mom, like, get down. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? My brother, like, get down. You know, stuff like that. It's really stuff going on. Do you think that's what that's what made you shift from being in such a tough environment to mm -hmm. not going the regular rap way? Yeah. The you know the kill kill murder murder and going the inspirational way. You think you think your upbringing. Over time, you, okay. over time, um, it was a transitional type of thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was always intrigued by what I was presented to, mm -hmm. what what was all around me. You know, as any kid would be. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, if it's a bunch of people getting a lot of fast money and they driving big cars, I'm seeing big Apple Jacks spray painted. You feel me? Chevys, man? big rims riding around, and my blood brother, my oldest, my dad's son, he one of the ones that got them. Yeah. But we in poverty, and we like. How he get to ride around like that and we barely can get school shoes. You feel me? You see what I'm saying? So it's like, it was intriguing to me. Because like my dad, he made that sacrifice to work a hospital job, $10 an hour for all of us in the house. Mm. And you know, and it was tough growing up. So it's like, we wearing hand-me-downs and stuff like that. Like, I'm wearing my brother's stuff and stuff like that. So it was just like, it was embarrassing as a child. So it's just like that being like humiliated like that kids talking about me and stuff like that just growing up like that eventually over time it like okay pops and them struggling we getting we're going from house to house and i'm going through this i'm like nah yeah i'm cool so that's when about you know i was actually in seventh grade when i saw my first pack of weed mm. yeah. ain't nothing wrong with that man yeah. you know what what people don't understand is is that when you're in that situation, mm -hmm. like you gotta either figure it out, yeah, or you gonna get left out. Nah, for real. So you know, there's nothing wrong with doing what you gotta do, especially growing up. You know, to to try to make a way out of no way mm -hmm. because there was no there was no direction there. Yeah, it wasn't set for me. Like you know, what I'm saying like if I was fortunate enough to have a a legacy that blessed me in a way that I can be financially stable or I ain't gotta worry about nothing. It would have been great, but I I grew up in poverty. You know what I'm saying? But it made a man out of me, though. Mm -hmm. it, it taught me a lot. Showed me character. It it taught me love, actually. Like, real love. Like, outside of the money. 
Because you think about, like, people who just got it handed to them. Excuse my language. They real life a holes. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like it, you ain't had to go through nothing. So it, it, our conversation don't even be the same. Yeah, you don't, you don't know what it's I like. Even, I can't even relate to you. Bro. Yeah, mm -hmm. you got it passed down to you. You really spoon fed it, mm. and, and and ain't nothing wrong with it. But it's just no, we don't relate. In no type of way. I'm yeah, saying. you know the, the the grind is definitely nah, for real. I it's definitely it for a part real. of it mm -hmm. for sure. For sure. Were were your parents at the level of support where they would try to instill certain things in you so that way you could? Most definitely, most definitely. It was my mom, me. my father. You know, my father. He was always a minister in the church. Mm. So like, we grew up in church, and my father was a minister. He would serve the pastor. You know, serve as much as he can in the church. Take the baptism pool. I mean, take the baptism clothes to get washed and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And uh, my mom, she was a prayer warrior. Like, she would be praying for everybody, you know, and stuff like that. And so, like, my mom will always instill and in install faith into us. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And she, like, really gave us the imprint of prayer and, like, how to move throughout the universe mm -hmm. with the power of prayer. She mm -hmm. always taught us the power of prayer. Mm -hmm. And my dad was the one to teach us the morals and the principles mm -hmm. and how to be a man and how to be a woman, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying, to my sisters. But I grew up in a loving household, and it really it taught me a lot. You know what I'm saying? The struggle taught us, and it brought us closer. Mm -hmm. It taught us love, and it brought us closer. So you yeah, gotta really, gotta really understand, definitely. man. That when, when you grow up in situations like that, for sure. You know, when you get, when you're fortunate enough to see what it feels like on the other side, man. I'm telling you, it just makes you appreciate mm -hmm. that upbringing ten thousand percent more. For sure, that's fire, bro. Mm -hmm. That's fire. So, at what point did you did you shift your focus to saying, all right, well, I think I got a shot in this music thing? Um, really, like, <laughs> it's so crazy because, like, I always like on my spare time. I was so opposite than the church. Right. Mm. <laughs> I would go on YouTube because YouTube started coming around like 2013. Mm. Yeah. So I'd be looking up the music videos and all the rappers that's coming out. You know, around my era, it was Chief Keith, Wayne, Drake, all of them. So I'm listening to them. And then, you know, we from Michigan, so we got the Peasies, the Icewares, mm -hmm. you know, all them type of guys. Baby Vizo Frank, and them. Yeah. yeah so yeah. it's like. I'm looking up to them. I'm hearing what they talking about. And it was just really like an influence type of thing. Like our culture and our city was like, okay, they going to count us out. We going to sell dope and we going to stun on y'all. I see like, what you just did with the counting me yeah. out. So so saying, we ain't got to talk phone. about it. We ain't got to <laughs> talk about it. We ain't got to talk about it. It was really like one of those type of situations. So I was like very intrigued and just like influenced by what I was listening to and just like what was around me. Like my cousins and my uncles and them, they they slanging. And they just like they trying to make away. away. Yeah, but it's like they was getting popped and locked up and stuff like that. So it was just like I didn't care about that part. I'm just like, whatever to get me out of this situation, let's do it. Gotta be done. Yeah. yeah. It's so, hurtful, man. I, ain't I am curious to know because you know people in church, church folks are very judgmental. Man, what? right? And still judgmental. Oh, definitely, <laughs> they definitely are. Never stop. They definitely are. Oh, Jesus. Was was Jackson a, a small town? Because it, you know, if it was, everybody knew what people were doing in the church. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I can is. only imagine mm -hmm. like the things that your parents would hear about the activities that you were partaking in outside the church. I was young though, so I really wasn't into like I moved to Ohio in seventh mm -hmm. grade. I was about like fourteen. Mm -hmm. What part of Ohio? Columbus. Okay. Yeah, the capital. So okay. like we we migrated to Columbus. You know what I'm saying? My dad had got a new job. So I I was raised in Jackson mm -hmm. and then I left Jackson in seventh grade and went to Ohio and then we moved to the far east side of Columbus, Ohio, Reynoldsburg. I went to Baldwin Road Junior High School. Hey, man, shit, mm -hmm. it don't get no easy in Columbus, my boy. Man, it don't. <laughs> I swear. It don't that's get really no all, easy in that, Columbus. That's really where all my stuff really started. Like yeah, all my man, yeah. One of, one, of my best partners, one of my best partners played ball at Ohio State. Oh, for sure. And his, 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 his stories used to be crazy. He it's was, reckless out there. He'd tell me they'd no. be out and about. No, they do. They be watching it happen. People no, getting robbed at gunpoint. They be I'm watching right. it happen. Mm -hmm. Like all the time. And I'm I like, bro, ain't no way. Before. Yeah. It's, it's it's crazy out there. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. It don't get no it's, easier it's in like, Columbus. It's a bigger for sure. city than Jackson. Yeah. So like 
when you go to a bigger city, a lot of more stuff be happening. It's kind of like faster than Jackson too. Mm -hmm. Faster pace, you know, more stuff, more people, more population. So mm -hmm. you're going to get into more stuff. And so like I went to school out there. So like once I start knowing people oh, you got comfortable stuff i got comfortable start rotating oh yeah mm -hmm. yeah, that's what yeah it was. for sure was there a life-changing event that occurred for you i think you you kind of touched on this earlier with your question um but was there something that happened where you made that conscious decision that what you were doing you know through your teens middle school mm -hmm. high school and you say you know what i'm out i can't do this anymore i gotta start looking in another direction what well, happened First of all, my mama had ended up getting cancer. Mm. She was the one that installed the faith inside of us. So it's like, when I seen that, I'm like, oh, no. But it was a series of events that happened. But that was the one that made me like consciously, right okay, I got to get myself together. You know what I'm saying? Because like, my mom is my everything. I love mama. Like, she was there when... Mama! <laughs> for real, no, for real. She was there, like, she was there when I got shot. You know what I'm saying? So like... She cleaning my bandages up. Like mm. I'm, I'm saying you're not just gonna mention that just like it's just like you feel me, like when I got shot, like it was yeah. just a little thing or something. <laughs> <laughs> what you mean when you got shot, man? Yeah, yeah I got shot. Twenty two years old. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How was it? Where you get where you get hit at? I got popped in the leg, my left leg. Hmm. And that <laughs> was before you found out that your mom had cancer? Yeah, that was before. Before, okay. Mm -hmm. So I would have... Shout out to them survivors, mm. man. Mm. My mother breast cancer survived three times. Mm. My mom had cervical cancer, mm. but uh, she survived. Tough and, as uh, nails. Yeah. Shout God out to the survivors, that. man. God did that. Mm. Yeah. Healed her. Mm. I mean, I just... I mean, this is just my personal opinion, but I think... And I love my mom, right? Mm -hmm. But I think getting shot at would have been... For me, the ultimate decision that I got to get out of this game. Like actually getting shot? Yeah. Yeah, I actually got shot and kept trapping. <laughs> <laughs> wow. No cap. <laughs> no cap. <laughs> no cap. Like uh, once I was trapping, it was like a, a, ha a habitual thing. Like I'm stuck in this. Mm -hmm. Like So is that one of those things where you understood like, hey, man, this might just come with the territory, bro. Sure. Like I can't stop. For sure. It I can't stop feeding my family yeah. because that. But what happened was, once God took my plug, that's when it was. It like, was over. Oh God! Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, not getting shot, not being able he, to re up. My phone up. Yeah. And then my plays. Oh, he dry gonna up. he gonna show you. <laughs> he he slowed yeah. my phone up. Yeah. Like, yeah. Now yeah, my yeah. plays ain't hitting. Mm. Like how my plays ain't hitting? I'm talking. About I got the firest line in the city. Yeah. Everybody know what's up. Now I was just dry. Like nothing. Then my mommy get cancer. Then my blood cousin that I just love dearly. Like it was my closest cousin. He gets killed back to back to back. Yeah. Yeah. And that'll sit somebody down. You know, for sure. the girl I was rocking with. You know, mm -hmm. she left when the money left. You know mm -hmm. how that goes. So I'm depressed and I'm looking on Instagram. I'm like, dang, my life like this. I can't believe my life like this. All of a sudden, I'm fighting depression, suicide thoughts, crazy stuff, just like murderous thoughts. And then next thing you know, my pops walk in my room. He's like. Boy, get up. That ain't you. Hmm. What you think about going to church? I'm like, man, you know I ain't rocking with that church stuff. You know what I'm saying? Because at that time, I'm, I left church around like 14. So like hmm. around that time, I'm like 22, 23. So I'm like, I ain't hearing that. I ain't hearing that, yeah, bro. I, I know what y'all went through in there. And what I went through, you know, I got kicked off the drums for no reason. And hmm. I was trying to express my gift. Was you fired with the drums? I was crazy with the drums. You bro. wasn't fired with them. I was fired with them drums. Trust me. You, you couldn't. Fire. You see the Michigan <laughs> North slang on I see you. what you did. Yeah, fire. <laughs> chili, chili cheese on everything. <laughs> no, for real. But uh, so I I was really hurt by the church. And you know how they did my parents and stuff like that. So I wasn't trying to hear it. So I told them straight up. I'm like. I'm not going to church unless you the pastor, bro. Mm. Straight up. Like, unless you speaking. Right. Yeah, I'm not going. So, I ended up making a choice. I ended up going because I was just fighting so bad. I was fighting depression and all them spirits just so bad that it was just weighing me down. I'm like, right. man, I need, a, I, I need an outlet. Yeah, yeah. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Something got to give. Something got to give, bro. It's either that or crash out. Yeah. So, uh, I ended up going to church, man. And guess what? My pastor, my dad was the pastor. He surprised me. So he officially like announced he it. Was, uh, he was the pastor the when pa I walked okay. in. Mm -hmm. Like, he already had the role. 
I'm so like, was the oh, message yeah. different? You think was the, the message changed because it was your father speaking? Uh, Would you have received the message the mm, same way you question. received it? Yeah. If it was any other guy up there preaching, like when you walk in, see pops giving the gospel. Yeah. Does that make I you say like, all right, me. let me sit down I then? Because I'm. I a, think that's what helped me, really. Because like pastors, they it's it's been hurtful mm. mm-hmm. seeing a lot of pastors just do things i just my trust yeah right you know what i'm saying like i was just cool on it mm-hmm. i know for me when i was looking for a church home i was really <laughs> bless you bless you all right my fault no you're good <laughs> um when i was uh looking for a church home one of the main important things for me was making sure that i could really hear the mm-hmm. pastor and relate to him and nowadays you got the traditional pastors <gasps> and uh, like, I, don't, I don't i don't i don't i personally don't <laughs> need that you. and i love when the pastor is able Teaching. to yes mm-hmm. they preach the word but then they also break it down so that way the everyday person can understand what their sermon Most is about definitely. Um, so it's funny that you say that, you know, when you found out that your dad was actually the pastor, mm-hmm. you were able to, you know, receive what he was saying and you felt like he was talking to you. Yeah, straight to me. I'm like, how you know this? Right. Mm. But I had to find out, you know, later on in life that it was God speaking through yes, him through with him. the Holy Spirit. Mm. And then the Holy Spirit was touching me actually from the words. You know, as if people don't know, you know, when God speaks to you, he draw you in with the word. Mm. Because, like, as he says in the Bible, let there be light, and there was light. So what he say, it got to happen. That's mm-hmm. where manifestation come from originally. You know what I'm saying? So when he was speaking, God was speaking through him because, you know, my uh, God had anointed my father to preach the gospel. It was his original time to preach the gospel. He served under ministries for a long time, but it was his original time to actually preach the gospel this time mm-hmm. in the earth. So... It was so happened for me to be getting called out of the streets while he was preaching the gospel at the same Divine time. Divine intervention. Hmm. Divine intervention. So as he's preaching, I'm getting touched by the Holy Spirit as he's preaching. So that's why my phone dried up. That's why I'm losing people. It was I'm, time for that. Uh, it, was, it was time. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like by the third Sunday, because I went three times. You know in, a row? in a row in a row that word was drawing me yeah, in yeah. you know what i'm saying by the third sunday that's when it's just like i give up mm. it's getting too deep but that third sunday it was resonating so hard with my real life i'm like yeah this it and so mind y'all you know i had the feds was on me you know what i'm saying about stuff that i was doing you know i had real life ops in the streets they turned into fans when i got out the water so like everything is changing as I get out the water. Like the stuff that I was dealing with, the depression, the uh, suicidal thoughts, the murderous thoughts, it all lifted off me when I got out the water. See, I thought it was just like mm, I don't know. Like they must be faking. Like this Holy Ghost stuff, tongues and all that. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I was. I used to laugh at that. I used to laugh at like I used to be crazy. Like I used to be laughing at that type of stuff. But like when I got out the water and experienced it for myself. I said, oh, yeah, it's, it's real. real. Yeah, I got to try right. this. <laughs> no, nah, for real. Like, it's real. Like, I went into the water high, mm. came out sober, right? And then, like, the desires, the things that I was desiring was changing. I said, oh, it's a real change happening inside of me right now. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, like, ever since then, that time, specifically June 6, 2021, my life ain't really never been the same for real. It's been on the up and ups. Like, I've been seeing God's power, like, move in my life, like his hand. See, I always, his hand was always on me, but I never knew in depth mm. how much it was on me. Mm. Like, I would always be getting out of trouble. Like, I'd get caught with some four ounces of weed. At You'd the be time so, God, was, if you get me out of this <laughs> one. Man, I be, promise. I ain't never going to do it again. <laughs> oh, when I got robbed, I'm like, just let me come out alive. Yeah. And when I got shot, I'm like, God, just keep me alive for my son and he'll be granting my wishes. You know what I'm saying? Like, please. And it's just like, dang, like now I'm actually seeing it. Like now he really, okay, I got a job at Amazon. Mm-hmm. I left the streets alone. I, after I got baptized, I got a job at Amazon. I'm doing this unto you, Lord. Like he changing my mind. Like I'm really serving him for real. Like, 
it's one thing to go to church and oh, okay praise the lord but it's another thing to actually serve him with your full heart and with your full mind you know what i'm saying so you really walking in the direction that he wants you to walk in mm. when he gave me his spirit the second day after i got baptized bro woke me up speaking in tongues god did because my mama prayed for me to have a saw to paul road to damascus experience bro mm. like from killer to christian serving god type of experience because i remember going into my mama just saying i didn't believe based off their circumstances and situations you see what i'm saying like based off of them not having money and just stuff like that it was messing with my belief system in god and how people did them in the church so i wasn't really like believing like that right. so my mama prayed for me to have a saw to paul road to damascus experience like a real life experience for me so i can believe and so God granted her prayers. So that's when he was grabbing me out the streets. I didn't know what was going on. I'm going through a deep, dark depression and all these dark holes just to come to the light. He grabbed me out. And that's when I was able to get my mind back, stop the smoking, you know, stop the drinking, stop the with women and stuff like that. And it's like I'm actually walking in purity and just walking in the light of God and actually seeing his hand on my life. And then that's when he started giving me understanding of you coming out of a dark world. And like when you in the dark, you can't see because there's no light, right? Mm. So the, the enemy had me blindfolded to what I was doing. I was enslaved to what I was doing. Mm. I wasn't free. But now that I'm free, I now see people who was enslaved and now it's encouragement music and I'm speaking a positive, uh, a positive message on these records to free people who was enslaved to their ways. You know what I'm saying? So you take you take the I know um I know there was a pretty good um Lecrae was a was a went through a little phase where people tried to label him as a For gospel sure. like a yeah. gospel rapper. Yeah. And you know I know he didn't he didn't take a liking to that title. Mm. Um and I think that's why you came and you broke down the inspirational. Yeah, you well you know me? that's God God blessed us with that genre. Mm. Cuz you know that wasn't a genre before mm -mm. us. Like encouragement music I mean, like God blessed us with that label. God actually spoke that into a person's mind and it became life. Mm. Encouragement music became a real entity. So do you feel like you had to go through what you went through for, for, to, to for, for your message? Encouragement music. For your message and your music yeah. to be what it is. Yes. I had to go through all of that just so I could meet my CEO. Right. And and and, and walk into this purpose. This purpose. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, it's just purpose. Just to break it down into simplicity, you know what I'm saying? It's purpose at the end of the day. So I want to, I want to interject earlier, but you was just, you know, I'm flowing right and, now, and, I and we appreciate that. But you know, when it comes to temptation, mm -hmm. right? That's um, a real thing. When you know you're doing good, you you got Amazon. You also did Uber Eats, right, or For, DoorDash? Yeah. Okay, so you're doing everything that you're supposed to do, so you can go down the right path. I'm pretty sure you had friends. <laughs> that thought you were crazy still, like how does still man still to this day they thought i was lace i'm sorry to cut you off no man. you're good but they thought you were lace they was calling me lace actually calling me lace so i responded something happened back. to him yeah something like, happened what the to hell me. wrong with yeah <laughs> i'm already doing i know <laughs> how that go anytime anytime you around you got partners that's around that's been there me and yeah. Fonz just talked about it off camera that's been there been around seeing how you really act yeah and then you show up one day Talking about in the name of, you feel me? It's just like, man, what's wrong with Buddy? But people can change, though. So that's why I'm just, I'm appalled. But you got to understand, like, they still blind. Mm. Mm. So in a blind specter of a mindset, it's not been changed yet. So they still on the level of blindness. But I can now see. So when I made this song, Holy Step, and Lord took the blind photo off my eyes, I could see now. Yeah, okay. And it went viral. God stamped and approved that with his hand so that it can wake other people up. So he used me as a demonstration mm. that you can be found. Right. I'm out here selling perks. Like, I'm in the streets for real, getting popped at and all type of stuff. You know what I'm saying? Doing what it do out there. So it's like, he used me as a demonstration that you can be found by the grace of God. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you a real question. Most definitely. What What is your message to that 13, 14, 15-year-old kid 
who's going through the same shit you went through. Yeah. Who's at the crib and the crib ain't right mm -hmm. and sports ain't right and school ain't right and they ready to crash out. Like, mm -hmm. what is your message to that kid who who doesn't know about Eman's music? Who doesn't know about the prophet's music? Yeah. Like, well, what what is the message to that to that kid that's going through that same kind of struggle that you went through? Well, you know, it, it, in, in fact, I would tell them like, keep your faith in something. Believe in something. Believe that you can overcome these obstacles. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Everything ain't always gonna last forever. This thing must that you're going through now is a season and it's temporary. You're gonna overcome it. You know what I'm saying? There's light after every tunnel. Mm. After every storm, the sun gotta shine. Right. It's, it's it's a fact. So it's like to encourage them, just know that it's not gonna last forever. And put your mind in a positive specter. Put your mind in places where it's not going to be negative thoughts. Like every negative thought that comes your way, just shut it down. Because your mind is everything. Mm. Your mind is the navigation through earth. And your words. So your mind first. Take care of your mind. Mm. Take care of your mental health. Try to read a book. Mm. Try to do things differently. All the habits that you did, it, it only take 30 days to create a new habit. 21. 21, actually. 21. Mm -hmm. see, 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 you got the smart guy right here. Appreciate 21. You. 21, so for sure. It's like, we got to break the habits, the habitual things that's been keeping us enslaved in the same patterns. So my message to them is to break those habits, think positive. Do the opposite of what you think you need to do. Mm -hmm. Don't feed into the lies. Of the ways of this world, bro. Mm, mm -hmm. And I'm just a, a messenger just to say that. You know yeah, I try to I try to tell the younger generation that's coming up, just before you start acting, before you start moving, just sit back and take a second. Take a breath. Like mm -hmm. just really think about what comes with the, the everything you, you feel me? Like with this with this what's Newton's physics, Newton's law of physics, every action has the opposite reaction. Mm -hmm. Like For think sure. about what comes with this this action that you're about to have bro like just just before you crash out just sit back and think about what comes with this it's because a lot, a lot of times a, a lot of these kids that end up going through real life situations yeah you know they're, they're just not prepared for the outcome mm -hmm. and you know it's it's not always pleasant on the other side mm -hmm. and bad decisions man, you're making hey, man no, bro. like that that god <clears throat> god blessed you bro when you got shot but it's a lot of people that go through that same story that just and don't it, come out of that exactly, on the other side of it. That's that's the thing. That's why I had to thank them like over time because I was a little hard headed. Mm. I really don't like rules and people telling me what to do because like I always made away from myself. I always was the type to figure it out type mm. of person. And like so like when they telling me about God and stuff. I'm like, I'm bucking the system. No, nah, no. Nah, Man, ain't. my partner gonna love this episode, bro. <laughs> he, ain't, he ain't did nothing for me. I, I made it happen. I mean, I'm like, man, shut up. Yeah. God created you mm. to go through these things. But I was blind at that time, so that was my level of mind state. Mm. That was the level that I was on. You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? Levels, mm. you go to the next level of thinking. You, uh, When I was a boy, I thought like a child. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Thought you knew everything. Thought I knew everything, but now that I'm a man, I think like a man. Mm. You see what I'm saying? So life had to humble me and teach me these things. You know what I'm saying? So when you were in the stage of rebranding yourself, yeah. you changed your name from Manny Moolah to Emmanuel the Prophet. Talk, sure. talk, talk a little bit about that. Really, Manny Moolah came with a lot of trauma. Mm. Came with a lot of trauma. It came with a lot of things in life that brought me down. That was my alter ego. That was the person that I thought that like, I could just throw on and I make things better and I can handle it myself. But it sent me to a deep, dark hole. Mm. So I didn't want no attachments with it. You know what I'm saying? Even though it's money, man, all right, money, money, this, but money, all oh, money ain't good money. You said something That's in. right. You said so something it's in. Like, <laughs> You know, even though money is the answer to all things, it's, a, it's an answer. It's it's a vehicle. It's a resource. But God is the source of everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think people get so blindsided and feeling that money solves everything. all your issues. Yeah, but it's some things that money can't even buy. People don't understand that until they get the money. Like exactly. once you get the money and you realize that, damn man, I've been up 
And I, I'm now I'm depressed again. I'm like what? I'm the money didn't up, solve down nothing. Down yeah, yeah, like you know what people got to understand is you really gotta you gotta look yourself in the mirror mm -hmm. because that money is is only gonna do so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it that ain't money gonna help your soul. It doesn't right. bring you happiness. Is what At I'm saying. All. That, Brian, that, no millionaire is ready to off themselves right now. Mm -hmm. You see, see it all happen. the time. Some of the most right. successful people. You know, they ain't got the, no happiness, and they don't know the balance. Mm -hmm. They think they gotta just sh 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 chase the money. Mm -hmm. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta do. I gotta do. slow down. Mm -hmm. Take a deep breath. I'm gonna tell you what what the 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 biggest thing for me when it came to that aspect of life yeah. about the chasing the dollar aspect of life is when I had my daughter, and I, you know, my daughter is not even two years old yet, but I had my daughter, and she doesn't care about the expensive toys or going out every day and doing expensive things. Yeah, like she just won't uh, don't make me emotional. She just wants the time. Like she just wants to she just wants to hang out. Nah, mm -hmm. And that that to her means way more than any money. We could be doing nothing and she could have a remote and we yeah. could pass the remote back and forth. But it's the biggest <laughs> thing to her. Yeah. You know, and that's I feel like that's the that's where people have to get back is that 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 inner peace mm -hmm. yeah, is, peace is something that can't that nobody else return, give you that recharge that recharge because yeah. we can work 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 but that family time to recharge mm -hmm. your spirit bro mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's what's gonna keep you going Good if you don't get sure. none of that bro you will just become a bitter robot mm -hmm. don't nobody want to be around your energy sucks you suck as a person. Energy vampires, man. Oh, That's God. what my grandpa, like, my grandmother suck. used to call them. And you wonder why don't nobody want to be around you. Energy mm -hmm. vampires, man. You they suck. suck the energy out the room. Oh, God. Mm -hmm. So it's like I can't be that person. Like I, I, I'm I, an artist. I'm a family man. And I'm a dope person. So I got to give that energy. If I'm drained by nothing but work and just nothing but work, it's got to be some type of balance. Got to have balance. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And like transparently speaking, I've been in Atlanta for a year. I moved here. How you like it? I love it. Now, the only thing that we're talking about now is my son. He's mm -hmm. five. Emmanuel Jr. Is he not in Atlanta with you? No, nah, he ain't called, he on Columbus, Ohio. Okay. okay. Yeah. So, you know, eventually all the things going to change. Like I said, it's just a season and a time. Mm -hmm. But and, and and all seasons and times ain't good, mm, mm. but it ain't bad either. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm building a legacy, and I'm doing what God has called me to do. But at the end of the day, it's like, dang, I miss my son. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, I think a lot of real. people just got to change that perspective on looking at the cup half empty. Right. Yeah. And, right. you know, start looking at it half full because, like you, gotta, you said, bro, you got to fill this spirit man up, man. Mm -hmm. Doing what I do. Cause I'm not doing regular rap, like I'm not. I'm not just spin, 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 shoot them up. Shoot them up. It's more substance in my music. Mm -hmm. So I really gotta live out what I'm talking about, and I and gotta challenge me. Are you mm -hmm. gonna talk about that? So <laughs> when when right I got a, I got to. a quick question that just came to me. Yeah. When you first said when you first decided that because you did make the murder murder kill kill music for no nah, I, I was really on some trapping oh, you know you know, i'm just saying that the, the, the yeah, genre no, that genre that, sure, genre, that music, genre of music for sure when you first dropped your first inspirational project most def i know what the feedback was how were you able to say like nah this is this is the way like this is the way i'm going so really like to be all the way transparent and, and like honest with you like i doubt it my faith-based music at mm -hmm. first i even doubted rechanging my instagram and my name because i'm thinking in my head like what is people gonna think mm -hmm. what is people gonna think but once god broke me from that people pleasing spirit i'm sorry to get so aggressive no you, no, you have to yeah. but, it, but it just irked me bro when people just oh i gotta do this for this person like, shut up no mm -hmm. you don't like just, where that inner peace that you get with yourself it just, it take you so far in life. Like, you know what I'm saying? So once I start rebranding my Instagram and actually walking it in the obedience that God told me to do, mm. bro, I promise to God, like the same music that I doubted, it went viral, bro. Mm. It went viral. Like, the things that you doubt and the things you worry about what people gonna say. Like, for instance, bro, we had a Radio 1 interview like me and my CEO, we had a radio one like interview to, to, to showcase the music and stuff like that. Mm. We nervous as heck. <laughs> we, we shaking, nervous as heck while playing the music. 
Bro, we get done, bro. We get embraced by everybody. Mm. They love it. Right, it's hidden. Change agents, bro. Yeah, yeah. We anointed for this. So it's just like, y'all said it's real raw, uncut, right? Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I'm just, I'm just giving it how it is, bro. It's like, real talk. I'm not doubting no more. I'm not people pleasing no more. I'm going straight to it. I'm getting everything I deserve, mm-hmm. bro. I'm 26. And my son, five. And the world need this change. Man, it's crazy that you say that because as I was looking at your interviews these last couple of days, I go to the comments, Mm -hmm. right? So I'm on YouTube and it's just so amazing how people are touched and they can feel what you're saying in your raps. Because I think with today's music, especially rap, you know, the raw, raw, murder, murder, Mm -hmm. people ain't really doing that in real life. Nah, it's kept. So when you're able to, when you're able to speak on your personal experiences you just don't understand how many people you're actually reaching and just seeing that consistently in your youtube comments like that was so amazing to see yeah like people can feel realness right and Most they definitely. can feel cap and mm-hmm. a lot of the christian gospel is cap it's raw and cut right mm-hmm. cap i'm not with it mm. give me the mainstream inspiration i want to reach the world don't put me in no box don't put me in that box, bro. And, mm-hmm. and the thing is, like, I love them mm. as brothers and sisters in Christ. Mm-hmm. But I see more division in there than hmm. outside. That's why it's imperative, man. It's imperative that you keep going. It's imperative that your message doesn't change because yeah. there's a market for it. And whether you like it or not, whether you see it right now or not, <clears throat> there's a market for it. And you got to understand that. People aren't, there's some people that just aren't going to vibe to your music, yeah, but there's definitely. a bigger portion of people that will mm-hmm. than won't. Like there's most a, there's definitely. a market for the prophet's music most definitely. and it's a lot of people that need to hear that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I, I, in life, I accept it like, no, I accept it. I don't like this. Mm-hmm. I accept it. I don't want it this way. I accepted these things. Why? Because everything happen for a reason, reason. Yep. everybody mindset is not going to be the same we need the bad to appreciate the good mm. the bad is the balance so you yeah. said what i appreciate is you bringing other artists like you have lil yachty for rich sure. the kid i yeah. mean what was that process like that process was a process <laughs> But, I can imagine. But, I, but I'm telling you, like, it was, it was, it blessed my spirit to see them actually get on a song with me and vibe. And, and vibe. <laughs> like, yeah. when it's, like, like, and this is what we do it for. Don't make them feel like they less than because you just so up Uppity. in God. Yep. And, bro, that's not a thing to me. That's, that's how church folk act. Oh, God, that's what it be. <laughs> he gave you a verse. Man, he gave me a verse for real. <laughs> and Rich really gave me a verse. Yeah. So it's like, and shout out to them, by the way. You know what I'm saying? Like, just knowing, like, okay, these people in higher places that got a heart for God too. Mm. You can't judge them because of what music they make, bro. Yeah, you know, you know, and that that's why I asked earlier. You know, in this situation, is like you say a lot of a lot of the the music that's getting dropped now is like you said is cap. It's all cap. So bro. when they see, like you said, they they can vibe and sense that. Man, buddy ain't really caring about nobody saying he Christian rapper and all that. He no. still gonna do it. He gonna man, let me no. hop on a track with him. No, nah, because I can sense the authenticity of this yeah, rap. I'm in the clubs mm-hmm. with it and all that. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. In the clubs. Yeah. In the club with Offset. No okay. cap. In the club. And you gotta meet people where they are. Yeah, and that's what exactly what I'm gonna do. Mm-hmm. Same people that the church counted out mm. on this counting me out. See what you okay. did there again. <laughs> See, that's drop that's a bar twice, fool. That's drop twice. A bar now. <laughs> drop a bar now. <laughs> let you know. It's that though. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm standing on. Mm-hmm. That's what it's gonna be, bro. I'm done getting. You know what I'm saying? Don't put me in no type of box. Don't try to shut me away. I'm coming for everything I deserve. Mm-hmm. 2024. Watch what I tell you, mm. Mister. Thank you, Lord. Mm. I heard that. That way. You feel mm. me? All of us included. <coughs> Was that voice when you you're signed to QC? Uh, right was that voice during your initial meeting that you didn't want them to change who you were and what you believed in i ain't had to say nothing god mm. went before me hmm. he had to meet him before you when went you went, when you really rooted and posture and position in god everything going forth already gonna be done mm. come on e 
The answer's already there. You just got to walk in it. Mm. I actually can't wait for my partner to watch this episode, bro. Like, he is going to be... <laughs> <laughs> he going to call me 10... That's 10, what he do, bro. He watched the episode, and he going to call me 10, 12 times. He going to say, man, where y'all... Hold on, bro. Where you... We <laughs> got to make sure we get that Instagram across the bottom for of here sure. now. So mm-hmm. everybody can follow you, so they can track your progress and what you got going. They can for follow sure. your journey. They can hear your gospel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because like I told you earlier, bro, it's needed. It's needed. A lot of yeah. people need Especially that. with the yeah. younger generation. They need that. They need that, that really sense of direction. The younger, the younger generation, generation needs it the most. Mm-hmm. What's new? What, what What do you have coming up? So I got a, uh, a project coming, top of the year, you know, February. Surprise! I was surprised. Okay. We talking about an EP or an album? Well, we going album mode on. Okay, that okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, I'm just trying to get a little insight, yeah. gang. I'm gonna go and get on my Apple Music. All <laughs> platforms. Yeah, all platforms. Say no Everywhere. More. Even Say my no folks more. in prison, they can listen to it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because you know, I still be getting them prison calls and stuff like right. that. You got you got That's one true. favorite verse that you wrote. One your one your favorite verse when you was writing it, you was like, yeah, this gonna hit <laughs> on everything. Give me like, give me like a, a little. You feel me? Wake up, gotta thank God because He be blessing me. Gotta praise Him because He gave me life and I got destiny. Think about it. I just wanna cry because He protected me. Listen to me. Wanna change your life? He got the recipe. He is savior. He was by my side when they rejected me. In His favor because you know I gave Him. I was left to me. Gotta praise Him. Lifted up my voice, man. Hello, oh, no, man. <laughs> don't don't do all that, bro. <laughs> we about to have to put the. Mur, 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 mur. Mur, 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 mur. Come on, bro. That way. No cap. No, the real way. Nah, bro. I ain't gonna lie. It's a lot of people that's gonna tap in mm-hmm. with you, bro. Straight because up. you what you doing is solid. And that's something that people don't people don't you feel me? I, just that's not like, a thing. If you was bold on the other side, you might as well be bold, bold over here too. Mm-hmm. That's it's not a lot of bold people over here. Mm-hmm. Everyone wants to follow what's trending or what's We hot. gonna trend set. Yeah. You yeah. feel me? We gonna you know what I'm saying? Trailblaze. Mm-hmm. Shout out mm-hmm. to them folks over at Real is Rare, man. That's one of my partners got a clothing brand. You oh, know, that's same hard. thing. I need some. Real is rare, man. Real is rare. Real is rare. Tell them so, tap me in, man. No cap. Y'all hear here, Al. Stop playing. Tap <laughs> yeah, me in. I need all the sweatsuits, whatever y'all got. All that. Yeah, I need sweatsuits for sure. For sure. I'm a sweatsuit type of guy, y'all. Me too. I can't tell. Shit. No, I, can't. I put it on today. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you feel me? I walked up on them cuz, got the pop in the coat. Lift clear. up the Prada boots. I ain't gonna talk about it. We ain't gonna talk about it. We ain't gonna talk about it. We ain't gonna talk about it. I might holy step in these Pradas. Okay. Okay. I'm filled up with them hundreds. Blessings fall down. Watch how God make it rain on me. And I'm covered by the blood. Devil can't lay a hand on me. Shout out to my new single, Big God. That's uh, out too. Oh, shit. <laughs> Let everybody right know how they can find you on social media. Emmanuel the Prophet, E M A N U E L D A P R O P H E T. Everywhere, all social media platforms. And you said Big God. Big God. That's the one that's coming out. That's the one that's out. Give me, give me some, give me some. Come it, on, bro. It released give, on uh, December eighth. What was the What was the backstory on that? The backstory on that really just like. Coming up with it, you talking about coming up? Yeah, with it? like how did you, how did you, how did you get to the point where you was like, all right, bro, oh they need, God. yeah, they need this oh one for sure. <laughs> really, uh, you know, uh, we we as a team, right? So I want to uh, shout out to my team, encourage me music, man. Uh, shout out, big shouts out to my CEO, mixed by Tilly, head A and R, and CEO of Encourage Me Music. He's the head A and R of Quality Control Music. Mm. And a uh, mixing engineer as well of quality control music. And uh, he's our CEO of Encouraging Music. We just got a record deal with Capital. You know, you so feel me? Congratulations. TCU, Congrats TCU on that, bro. Okay. You know Congrats saying? on that, bro. That's big time. Real ones. So it's just like, shouts out to Tilly, man. Me and Tilly came up with that song together. Any That's features? Uh, any features on that song? On Big God. Oh, it's. You think about you think about remixes? Is it, where your mind going? Remixing coming on the way. Okay, hey, okay. Hey, we ain't gotta hey. do too much. <laughs> we ain't gotta do too much. We ain't gotta do too much. Yeah. Yeah. OG Parker is the producer, yes sir. OG Park. OG Park. <laughs> <laughs> Shouts out to him too. No cap. Most dead. 
Well, we appreciate you stopping through. Um, yeah, too, I folks. enjoy your story. Like I'm, appreciate I'm really it. big on storytelling and yeah. just being able to listen to people's journey and what they had to get through and how they came <laughs> overcame the obstacles and trials and tribulations. Yeah. Um, but we really appreciate. It. We might have to get a part two in. I ain't gonna lie, man. I'm like part two. I rock these be these be these be the ones that that people really really lock into when yeah. they because it's it's we we try to put out quality content. Um, I know you said you, you were QC, y'all didn't see what I did there. Um, <laughs> you feel me? But um, you know, seriously though, like the 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 conversation flows. Most definitely. Yeah. And that's what like I told you earlier, that's what the people want to hear. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like they don't want to hear the, you know, well, you do 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 you know, when you got the going, that's what people want to hear. They want to hear that raw, that, that real, raw, that yeah. authentic. Yeah. Because now they feel like they know you as yeah. a person. Right. And it's Most way definitely. easier to follow right. you as an artist now yeah. because Come on, I have smooth. a my fault. Okay. No, 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 my, no, fault. No, no, my fault. No, no. My fault. You still saying my fault. My fault. My fault. I had a moment. I had a moment. I had a moment. I had a moment. But nah, bro, that's what I'm saying, bro. Like, like when you get to when you get to really get down to Emmanuel. Yeah. Like if people get to know Emmanuel. Oh, yeah. Following the For prophet sure. is easy, gang. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Following the prophet is shit. I, man, that's my partner. I feel like I exactly. grew up with, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. because they heard your authentic story. Now they feel like I can relate to that because I For came sure. from the same thing. I'm like, a I had. Person, just like y'all. Mm-hmm. You feel me? I am a person just like y'all. God is God for a reason. He come to save people like us. Mm-hmm. So I may have struggles just like you. <laughs> I just want to let that no be known. Man, too, I man. need a little side, little. You feel me? Counting me out in the song or something, man. Little. Oh, what? Oh, I can't wait. To you feel that, me? Man. That's light. <laughs> That's now, light. Got now, that I, now that I came here, and you know, like, I ain't gonna lie to you, like, um, my leadership, like, they like to surprise me, so I ain't know who I was coming to meet today. Yeah. Shout out to your team. You yeah. feel me? Your team did you right. <laughs> like, even when I signed the label deal, like. I was under the impression that I was going to meet up with Apple. So I didn't know what I was walking into. Yeah. So then when I walked into Capitol and they just started asking me all these questions, I'm just like, I got to hold it together. Because <laughs> I'm like, oh, my God. This is a big moment for it's me happening. right now. It's happening. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it's like, I was surprised because I'm under the impression I got to just do a radio interview mm-hmm. or something like that. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah, it's man, a blessing again, to meet y'all though for sure. Again, yeah. man, we appreciate you stopping by, bro, Most and definitely. just giving us a piece Sorry. of your journey, bro. You for know, sure. we um we're excited to see what the future holds for you. Yes. Appreciate y'all. You know, mm-hmm. we are definitely gonna track your journey and follow you along the yes, way. Yes, sir. You know, don't forget about us little people, man. Man, you ain't know, no way. You, you feel me? Y'all really like we the same. We mm-hmm. together. Like that's just the motto we stand by as well as a team. We together. Ain't nobody left out. No brother left alone. Yeah, man. Me and JQ, we have these conversations often um, just about how we started the Count Me Out podcast so organically. Like, mm-hmm. it's not. Mm-hmm. Ain't nobody behind us pushing our brand right. like yeah. how we wanted to get pushed. Right. But yet again, we keep finding ways to break the mold. Yeah. So, you know, this is just going to be another one of those episodes. Just better and better. You feel yep. me? So Elevation you know. is key. Mm-hmm. What you looking at me for? Right. <laughs> yeah, 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 no, yeah. Hey, but look though. <laughs> next time, next time you come around, gang, yeah. I'ma see what that left hand jumper look like. Oh, we, got we, it. we not gonna record it though, cause if nah, it's trash, yeah. I don't want the people to judge for it. Sure, for you sure. know they're gonna judge you if it's <laughs> trash. That's an understatement. You, know what you done said you can hoop. Now them folks gonna be looking for you, man. Yeah. They're gonna be looking for you. That's it's cool. your boy Spoon. It's your girl JQ. And this is another great episode. The Counting Me Out. Counting Me Out Podcast. Let's show. Peace.